Hello, Fire Rat Warriors. Happy Monday. I'm gonna go straight to my topic, and then after that, I'll see you in the FD8 for my training lesson today. It's gonna be resistance training, how to set up the bands in different angles, so you understand that it's not only about pulling the bands, you gotta know how to. Otherwise, you're not gonna load the muscles enough, so the tension, the angles, all that matters. That's why with me, I teach you how to do it and how to evolve. Most people are so scared of changing that they hold on to what they can't do anymore. And in bodybuilding training, you're not gonna grow from what you've done that you've always done, even though you feel like you're growing muscle stronger. It's very hard to go past a certain point and if you're too injured, too fatigued, too old, to restart and having all body ability, you gotta know there's a time in life we have to accept and be happy, not sit and look in the past, how it was easy in the past, and it's never gonna come back. One of the toughest things for me as a coach is the obsession for women culturally trained to always rely on beauty to always make sure that the most important thing as a female to be competitive and having the greatest chance to be the best winning woman who has all the accolades and all the admiration from as many people as possible to be a good standing woman, a woman of means in society. And it's all about the looks. Now, since I'm a fitness coach, and I also live my own life. I have to tell the way I see it as a coach, as a woman who is not about being the prettiest woman in the room. I'm not about whatever I can do to hold on to some kind of image. I'm not about wanting to have AI and filters on myself so I look like I have never even lived life. I don't want to fool the world about that I'm much prettier, more attractive, more extremely elegant, whatever you can make in editing, in photoshopping, in artificially making things. For me, that reduces my own work and dedication. For me, too much of, let's say, if I were to make my whole body and my face and everything perfect to the level of it's not real anymore, it would be unreal. And what am I about? Exactly. I like reality and I like real life and I like concept and substance. I don't like what is gonna expire fast, it's like a flake, like a little date, one night stand. And if you think about it, if you're so drawn into looks and surface and his body is the perfect body and when you grow older and you have to see you're not young anymore, when you can't handle that, you feel that you lose all your self-worth, you have no place anymore because all you've been conditioning yourself to hold on to like you're trying to fight with grip in your arm about staying 20 and never grow old. Like if that's you, you're gonna have trouble in fitness life because fitness life doesn't care that you were young one time and you were fit or maybe not. It doesn't matter because you have to kind of separate yourself from how you feel and how you rationally know things are, and then what are you gonna come out? What happens with you in the end with your life quality? That's what I think about. So in my coaching work, the frustration is that all women tend to be like girls who always want to have compliments, that you go and you're thirsty for everyone's attention, particularly the most strongest, toughest, coolest men. The more a man admire you, the more you're going to notice that you love to have the attention. That's the number one reason why a lot of women don't stand up for women's rights, because you are into patriarchic society. You want to be validated and approved by the men you're drawn to, the ones who tell you that you won, you're number one, you're the most amazing woman. So that's why women support men who are not at all caring about women a lot, just so you know. And that is because women are so scared of standing up on your own, you have only been validated by a male or a man, and that's how you've been grown up in culture too, that that is what matters. Now imagine how everyone wins, it's like almost everyone else before women, and women always take the last step, and hey, you go, are you going to do that too? I'm not. If all women heard what I say here, that you all compete, about being pretty that it's not gonna last. So you have a short-term happiness based on looks. 
Now, since we live in an age-obsessed or youth-obsessed society, where we kind of just think that women at 20, 25, well, that's in the perfect biologically most likely to be reproductive. Of course, you are in your high time of the pretty look, because biologically and uh, culturally, that makes sense. Everyone pops up babies, you're pretty there, you get married when you're pretty, not when you're 95, right? Yes, so you are doing all that when you're young and you are stunning. Most women I know have never had a good relationship with yourself. You have never been able to look at yourself, your body, naked or not, without feeling something bad about it. You have read too much into what other people are telling you about your body. No matter how normal and healthy, natural your body is, it's always going to be criticized by other people. And if you don't know, you're going to be one of them. So that's what I became. I just became my own critic because I didn't see any problem with my body before I started bodybuilding. I just saw I have a body in the mind. I'm going to do it. Then everything that wasn't able to be shaped became a criticizing thing. My hair, my face, my accent, my personality, my body, my skin, my bruises, my knees, my glutes, my non-glutes, my muscles, too little, too scrawny, too fat, too not. Everything always wrong no matter what. And I just uh, thought, well, I should handle that. That's the thing. I thought I was supposed to just handle that people have criticism of me, and that's why I am there, keeping on entertaining social media, talking to people who I thought were going to understand if I just explained that I'm what I'm about. That was how I was, naive, until I got really pissed at people, because I couldn't handle it. I couldn't handle to read everyone's shaming and ridiculing about myself all the time from top to toe for 15 years in a row. So, but I thought I should because rationally I get it. I shouldn't care about what people think about my body or me or anything because it's not about other people, it's about myself. But that's the rational mind. That's the, when I know I should, th think, I should feel like that. But do I? That's the thing. It's not the same as knowing what to think versus how do you feel. Somehow, I feel women have forgotten that. So you hold on to, I know I'm not supposed to want to be young and, and having like smooth skin and smooth everything and perky and everything is standing tight or whatever. But you still want it, right? So that's the thing. You haven't let it go. It's just what you say, rational, you know. Oh, I know what to do, and I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't, it's not a big deal, I should just do blah, 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 that's how it feels. Because you don't feel it, but you hold on to your intellectual processing machine in the mind, which is the one that you get insecure with, and compares you, and feel like you're never good enough. And that's the critic in you, that when you train and build your body, you have to come to that, that acceptance about yourself, that if you don't know how to tell yourself that you are pretty enough, the way you are, but it's not about the looks, that your body is good enough the way it is and you're not doing all health for having the body look anymore. You gotta stop pushing what you work for when you're young, when you're not a ch spring chicken anymore, because it becomes ridiculous. It becomes ridiculous because I objectively know that I'm not marketing the same way when I'm 25 as when I'm 50. It's going to be a different reason. It's a different demographic. Do I have to feel that I'm expired? No. But I will if I hold on to that subscription of culturally entrained, ingrained conditioning, what you should hold on to. For me as a woman, I'm not holding on to youth looks that I shouldn't grow old. I'm trying to be what I've done in the past, something like that. And that's what I feel most women are about. Like one time, you have looks in your mind about that is most important. You never let it go. It becomes this crazy thing and then all women have to kind of go and overdo it. That you feel pretty, you feel amazing, you feel stunning. And then you say that about people who are, let's just say this, objectively. I can say, if I stand here and I don't have the best outfit, I don't flex and I'm not made up at all and I have a bad angle, I can really look like crap. Doesn't change that I love myself. Doesn't change that I look and I say, hey, I look really ugly. Great. And that's what I have a problem. Oh, man. Apparently, I cannot call myself ugly because every woman feels it's a bad thing. You think 
I say I'm really ugly as in I feel bad that I'm not pretty. No, it's the opposite. It's the liberation from I don't care about that you think I was prettier when I was younger or not, or I'm prettier when I have uh, shorter hair, or I'm prettier when I have a dress or whatever, because I'm not living like a marionette puppet anyway. So no matter what the compliments or the lack of compliments are, it doesn't matter to me, because I'm still the same person, but my body, my looks will not stay the same. So why the heck would I add my personality, what I'm about, everything about me to a look? That would be crazy, because I'm not going to be the same person as when I was seven years old. <laughs> so, so that is what I feel about women and this beauty thing, that every woman, just like me, will be pretty, yeah. But what is it going to take for you to feel pretty? It doesn't matter how pretty you are, if you're the number one elite model in the whole world, you can still feel suicidal and go on and kill yourself because you don't see any worth, you have nothing to live for, right? I think you've heard about those people. They're so pretty, so successful, have all the money. Why do they not love their life? Because it's deeper than that. I need you to understand that you got to raise yourself up like your own daughter to really defend your honor and to stop seeing beauty and looks as the first thing you care about. The reason as a fitness coach I have to warn you is that you go for the look and when the look isn't up to your liking and yet because that's been too short time, you give up because you're not pretty in the body enough. You can't handle saggy skin, you can't handle changing your body, you can't handle that you can't do what you used to be when you were young. And all that you come to me as in you think I can do all I could do? No, and I don't want to. And I couldn't care less about when people, it's almost like I want people to say, and you know, again, like, you used to be so pretty, like, yeah. And then like, so? <laughs> the thing is that when you don't care about holding up an image, it's so good. Because for me, I have never felt prettier in my whole life. And that's in my ugly moments. That's when I have my, my trashiest, you know, my diaper style grandma panties on and I have the cast and I don't care, I'm just comfortable. I have a big pobo and I just love it. But if I strip, if I strip down and flex, man, can go on stage. That's the peacock class I'm talking about. The thing is that beauty for me isn't at all the same way you see it. And in fitness and training, think about this, that we all together set the term for what we hold on to is ideal or not. Do you know what I think is ideal? To be happy. Ideal is to have a body that is transportation, that you keep for health, that is like this is your property, your asset or your subscription body, you have to care for it. To come into life and realize you have a body, this is your experience machine and you are to assist your body to be your own best friend, to have a home. Instead of investing in big mansions and cars and things that all dep depreciate after you bought them. How about yourself? You can never be bought. You can build yourself up, but you can never buy yourself. Doesn't matter how much money you have, you can't buy back time. You can't buy the beauty, even though you think plastic surgery. You know what happens when everyone has money to make plastic surgery and have everything prettified? Yeah, you look just like another Kim Kardashian and all people look the same. That's pretty until you've seen thousands of thousands. Now, I've seen that so much, I don't even... You know, I have like been so monotonous and tedious in seeing the same image and every woman looks the same. So now when I see Facebook profile requests from me, like I delete the ones who just are too AI already because they are fake, ah, nah, ah. Because that's how I am. I'm not at all shallow. But I do judge by what you put out there in your image, what you're trying to hold on. So just think about that. So when I coach and I call myself ugly, then people freak out because you're not ugly. Like, I know, but I mean, I, have, I feel comfortable. Ugly could be the same term as the most attractive, sexy, confident, beautiful, at the same way. Ugly, like ugly fruit, like, oh. Have you seen those, the ones that are like leftovers? Yeah, my cat. He would have considered an ugly cat because he's 10 years older. Seeing a cat nobody wants because they're not as cute and perky and they got a story, they have baggage. But I want to be the cat's last love, not their first one. First one, puppy love? Oh, they think you're everything for no reason. But the last love of your life, like the lone wolf life, they see you for what you are. Their savior, the one who keeps you for to the last minute. And that's how I want you to feel about yourself. 
that since you're gonna be around, you're gonna have to want to be like me, looking forward to growing old, to look forward to see yourself, to look forward to see your evolution. When you take away your need to be a sex object, because it comes down to that. You don't need to be pretty for working hard, to help people, to inspire, to be a real good person. You don't need looks at all. You need health for yourself, your body to be living life, but you don't need looks. So how come I came into looks when I've never been into looks at all? I wasn't even know that I could be a fitness model until Brian Moss showed me how to tilt my face and then boom, I thought, wow, because I'm a fitness model, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm a fitness coach. I tell you, I teach you how to train your body and I teach you how to eat. What the heck do I need to have a look for? Why do I have to be a woman who's beautiful if I'm going to be marketable about telling you how to eat so you're not going to die from heart attack? Why do I have to be pretty for you to have interest to train with me to build your body? Isn't that crazy? And here's the funniest thing of the last. All my women, you are so empowered, right? How come you have so few female thinkers that you quote? But I see all my women love to show all the big men philosophers, philosophers about how they reason, but not females. So you gotta just know that when you think about what you're doing and who do you want to be pretty for, it comes down to a lot of that thing of our culture and what we've been trained to hold on to and work for. So yeah, I don't want to be a woman who holds on to having the admirers of other men based on looks, because then I know that the, when the looks are gone, well, I have nothing. And I don't want to build my life on that. I build on the content, on myself, my heart, my passion. So I just want to tell you that if you've been so obsessed about looks and you cannot really get over it, and you've been a whole life told you're never pretty, you've always been too fat, your body was always bad, you were a fat kid, um, you, you know, you, you're not cute, you're nothing. Yeah, I was told that too. Like, I remember my stepdad once he said I was having no intelligence at all. I was completely free of intelligence. That, I remember that. I remember all those things, but I don't hold on to it. And I don't hold the grudges. For me, it was all I needed for my life journey, for my fight, for my challenge. So I'm grateful. You gotta want to see all your meetings with all people, all those fighting, sparring, spawn fighters, <laughs> spawn partners of life. As for what they are, they shape you. Don't take the bad stuff of the shape. Refine it, chisel it, and make sure you end up on top where you're happy being yourself. And that's what I want you to know. That all the things you say, you're stunning, you're beautiful, you are good the way you are, you have to know that that doesn't mean that you have no work to do. Doesn't mean that you don't want to be prettier, or that you have prettier days or that, but it's not about the looks. So if you are stopping yourself, because your face looks saggy, but you're gonna have no heart attack coming your way. Because it's more important for you to have a man who wants to stick it in, than for you to live long for yourself to be a diaper butt like I'm gonna be when I'm, if I'm so happy to be alive, 95. If I'm so alive, I'm gonna be maxing out of the five pound deadlift, if I'm lucky, and feel like the same way I do today, that this is the best day of the day, because I can do what I love to do, that makes me happy. I love to eat, I love to train, I love to talk about it, and I love to meditate, and that's what I want to do, that's why I want to have as many days as I can, because I don't take my day for granted, and I don't take my body for granted. And if you think about it now, I saw this documentary about a guy who, uh, he buried his own grave for preparing and he had it so he was sitting up and he was so excited about it and I just love that. He was from, he was in India. He was a remote, he just lived in the middle of nowhere, not complying and I'm just saying I love people like that. That is the person in me that I would be if I wasn't into fitness or training. So just so you know, life has chapters and I don't know how long I want to be feeling like I have to have homework, uh, gym, that I want to train at home. For now, this is what I love to do, but it's not going to last forever, I know myself. And that moment where I don't want to be stationed anymore, I want to be traveling the world again and living all over and stay fit on those way and eat the way, you know, Hong Kong, Japan and Tokyo and Russia. I love traveling and live my fitness life all over. But I, that means I keep on my minimalistic style of how do I train my body when I have no gym at all. So I keep on reducing and reducing because I want to have as much freedom in my life from myself, from my own mind, 
that can become a new prison if I don't want, if I don't watch it, right? Like if I'm marrying myself too much to how I want to train, now it's gonna make me suffer because if I get injured again, which probably gonna happen, if I hold on too much about how important this is, I'm gonna be miserable because it's gonna be like I'm trying to win over life and I can't ever make it. So you gotta let go and surrender and go with the flow. So remember now that you can just shift your mind by practice to train yourself, to compliment yourself, give yourself all those compliments and flatter that you have never given. Nobody's stopping you. And it's so funny because nobody wants to do it because you think you don't feel it anyway. Well, you will feel it when you realize that the best one who can tell you because you know it's true is yourself. Everyone else might lie. How do you know they're real or not? How do you know they don't want something out of you? How do you trust that? Because if I know all or nothing in you, it's going to be like this. Oh, I was so happy, you told me I was so beautiful. And then the next moment, wait, what happens when I don't have a beautiful day? So then you're stuck to the same thing again. So here we go, and I just want to say this. To be pretty, that I do want to be pretty and to be told and to feel holding on like a little child in you that you just want to be told that you're cute and you're perfect and smiling, that you want to achieve all those things you had, model dreams, be the pretty girl when you were a kid, that, that, that isn't really what I want you to work on for now. I want you to work on being happy, healthy, and to love yourself, to do what you want. And when other people criticize and react, which they do, because you're doing, you fall in your heart. And that is very to question by people, because that's terrifying. What if everyone followed their heart? We would have a happy planet. Oh, yeah, not good, right? So it's better to make everyone conform, take the outsiders out, keep everyone to do aligning the same thing that nobody makes happy, because that way we know what we're doing. So everyone can be miserable to be together. A uh, big fat no, so that's why I'm not in fitness world, why I don't have fitness friend outside of my coaching, because that's how I feel people live. A monotonous prison style, gotta have it done, grind hard again, doesn't have to feel like it, and here we go, the same workout for the next 30 years, and you don't even do it, you just redo, you just refuse to see that you can't even do a 10% range of motion more on your list, but you still don't want to change and work better for your body. No, no, no. Because it's all about the image again, right? So here we go. You gotta want to be real with me or I'm gonna make you too insecure because I want you to see your worth. I want you to, just to wake up, stop listening to everyone else, start building your, relas your relationship with yourself today. And especially if you're even interested to have another partner, you sure wanna make sure that you are not just becoming another person's assistance on their dreams and pursuits in life, but you actually get your own to realize them, actualizing and live it out. That's why I say cease the training day.